Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 9, Lesson 2. I'm going to start off by going over the I Can objective. It says, I can solve real-world problems involving multiplication of mixed numbers by writing an equation to model the problem. And the learning objective is to multiply a mixed number by another mixed number. The prior learning is that students represented the fraction A over B as the product of A and 1 over B. Students use the understanding that a multiple of A over B is a multiple of 1 over B to multiply a fraction by a whole number, and students multiplied fractions by whole numbers using visual models and equations. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson on page 221. We have a spark your learning that reads, Aaron paints on a large rectangular canvas that measures two and one, for one fourth feet by four and one third feet. He wants to enter his painting into an art contest. The contest rules say that the area of all canvases must be less than four and one third square feet. So based on these rules, can Aaron enter his painting into the contest? Explain with words or drawings. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that four and one third shows up here and here. And from lesson one, we learned that the area is length times width. So for my measurement of the canvas, it would be two and one fourth times four and one third. But in order to enter his drawing into the contest, it would have to equal four and one third. Now I know that this two and one fourth is definitely bigger than one. So I'm thinking his painting is just too big. Without doing any work, just looking at the numbers, I can't have four and one third be my answer unless the other number is one and keeps it the same. So unfortunately, Erin can't enter that canvas into this contest. All right, but let's go ahead and flip the page to 222. And I am going to go through this whole lesson. Um, if you want to pause on your own and try a couple problems on your own, please do so. But I am just going to go ahead and teach the thing all the way through. So we have a build your understanding. Number one, it says Tam draws a logo for her company's website. The logo is a rectangle that is one and one third inches wide and one and three fourths inches, inches long. What is the area of the logo? Well, for A, it says each unit square shown represents a square with a side length of one inch. So what that means here is here to here is one inch and here to here is one inch. That's what that's saying. And it says use this area model to represent the area of Tam's logo. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take my one and one third and I'm going to separate each one inch into third pieces. So let's go ahead and do that in a different color. So I'm going to split this into thirds. And then I'm going to split this way into thirds. So my first measurement is one and one third. So what that means is that I'm going to have one here and then one third stop here. So this is really, I'm going to just try to make it a little bit darker. This is the first part. There is my one and one third. Then going the other direction, I have my one and three fourths. So going the other way, I'm going to split each square, my one hole into fourths. And that black line is my one hole. So if I split it in half and then split each of those in half, I'll have my fourth and do it on the other side of the black line. So half and then cut these in half to get fourths. And I know that it's going to be one and three fourths. So here's going to be my one hole to the black line and then three of the fourths that I cut. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And that's going to be my one and three fourths here. All right, so that's A. We did our drawing. And I'm going to show you in black exactly where I'm going to cut off. So right there. 
All right, for B, why does this area model show a four unit square? So the four square, so it took my square and it split it and put a little cross in the middle. It's asking, why did it do that? Well, as it said up in A, that each side of each square is one inch. And I know that I have one and one third, so I need each black line to show me where one hole stops and where the next part starts. So I have one hole, two holes, and I'm gonna be somewhere in between the one and two for my mixed number of one and one third and one and three fourths. So I need two parts going across and two parts going up and down because each of my numbers are one and one third. So the way we wanna word this is that each square is worth one hole. So each square is equal to one inch. All right, so for C, how do you show the width of one and one third inches? Well, I made three columns in each square. So each square had three columns and that was decided by my denominator of three and then I know if I made it an improper fraction, it'd be three times one is three plus one is four. So there's four of those one thirds. So I shaded in four columns. All right, and D is asking the same thing, but for the other measurement, how did you show the length of one and three fourths inches? Same thing, each square had now four rows going the other side. So each square had four rows, and then if I turned this into an improper fraction, it would be four times one is four, plus three is seven. So then I would have shaded seven rows. All right, for E, how many equal sized parts represents the area of the logo? Well, I know if I shaded in four columns and seven rows, I need to multiply those to find the area of the logo. And four times seven is 28. So I have 28 equal size pieces up above in the blue and the red. And then for F, what is the area of each equal size part? So one of those squares inside of the bigger square, so each of those blue by red, how much is each square? Well, I know I made each column worth one third, and then I made each row one fourth. So I'm gonna take my one third and my one fourth, and that's gonna be the area of one of those teeny tiny little squares. So I have my one third times my one fourth. It's just like what we were talking about with the tiles in the previous lesson, but now we're just talking about squares that we created. So the area of each of those squares is gonna be one times one is one, and three times four is 12. All right, and then for the last question, what is the area of the logo? Justify your meaning. This one is the trickiest question on the page, which is why I wanted to go through the whole thing together. So for this, I need to find out how many 1 12th pieces I have in each of those black squares. So the four sections, I'm going to break them up and say how many 1 12th pieces do I have. Okay, so in the top left square, I have all of them shaded, right? I have 12 of the 12. So that equals 1. If I have all of that square, I'm going to say that is worth one hole, okay? Let me go ahead and redo that and make it nice and clear. One hole. Then in the right top corner, I have four that are shaded. So this is four out of the 12 available. So I'm gonna write that as four twelfths. Now in the bottom left square, I have nine chosen out of my total 12. So that's gonna be nine twelfths. And in the bottom right square, 
I have three chosen out of the 12 available, so that's going to be three 12s. And then you would add all of these together. So I know my one whole, I'm just going to kind of keep that separate for a second. So one whole plus, and I'm going to add all my fractions together. They all have a denominator of 12. So I know my denominator stays 12. I just need to add the numerators. So four plus that nine is going to be 13 plus three more is 16. So right now I have one plus 16 over 12. I know that 16 over 12 is going to, is an improper fraction. So I need to turn it into a mixed number that's going to equal to one whole with four left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those two whole numbers together, the one that I already had and the one I'm getting from turning it into a mixed number, and I'm going to make it a two with my remainder being four over 12. And then if you wanted to simplify, which you should um, get into practice of, it would be end up being two and one third as our final answer. All right, that is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems and I'll see you back for module nine, lesson three.